Are we all ready for this? Now, I have, uh, I have actually done the one end. I'll just show you. Uh, okay, uh, you can see what I've done. I, I've squished all this down and tried to make it in the middle. And I have sewn a quarter of an inch across there with this bit underneath. Uh, so on the back side, it looks like that, yeah? Now, we are going to, I am going to cut everything off neatly. And then this bit is going to come up and hide all that. Now, for the other end, this is why I thought, ooh, when I came to do it, I thought, ooh, I, I think I ought to show you this because I know you may struggle with it. So I've moved the zip back, as you can see, my zip is now up here. But I've put a, a, a make up machine. I've put the a, a, a wonder clip on there to try and hold these together as much as I can. So, uh, in some ways, it's, it's out of camera shot because it's this way round. But, again, I am I am going to try my best to show you how I do this. All right, so I've got a clip on there. I've got a pin in there. And I'm going to take that clip off now, get it under my needle, keeping everything straight, just off to one side of the actual thing, and do a few stitches and a few stitches back again. Yeah, give me nice secure. And get onto the fabric. Now I can take my pin out. And this is where it can all go wrong. I want to keep my zip together. But, whoop, now, see, what did I just do? Needle up. Oh, cut off. Yeah, sorry. Cut off. As I say, if it happens to me, it'll happen to you. What happened there was... <laughs> I lost my grip on that piece under there, right? So I'm just putting it back. I'm just going to put it back. Okay, okay, right, fine. Get it. I was a bit too rough with it. Because i got to make sure that those pieces... I gotta make sure that these pieces hang together, yeah. With that, as I'm sewing, so I gotta make sure it's right. Oh no, I've, I've moved that the wrong way round. Let me get my act together. So you know, I know it's not easy, right? I am partially way in, so I'm having the back stitch again. Because I lost it, didn't I? Right. So now, yep. And and this is a you know you are you are manipulating everything. You want to try and keep that zip together. We're going to go across the zip. So when you get to a certain stage, well, you got to allow this this. Take that zipper even further back, if I can. It's hard back front, isn't it? Come back, you bugger. Right, which gives me a bit more, a bit more leeway to flatten this out, yeah. And I'm gonna take that clip off now because I'm right at the crux of it. And I don't want to bend it up too much, but I do want it to go across that zip. So here we go. And as I go across the zip, I am reversing over it, take my next pin out a few times. And then reverse back at the end. Now, so, from the back side, you can see I've done, well, more or less a quarter of an inch. From the front side, it looks like that, and my zip is actually together. So, if I bring the zip forward again, you can see that that zip is, is meeting, and that's fine. 
Okay, so that's all we need to do for that. Now, I am going to bend this back. And now I've got stitch lines across the zip so the zip can't come off. I am going to cut this, cut this and the tag if it's sticking out uh, across um, nice and neat. Because what we need to do when we've got rid of this bulk is taking, uh, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it by hand. Because it, I want this, you see where this lipstick uh, piece is? I want this to come up and sew into where the edge of that lipstick is on that side and sew in to where the edge of the elastic is on this side yeah to make it nice and neat now you can't do this under the machine well you can but you're going to have a load of stitching um if you did do it if you could manage to get it right under the machine you would have all the stitching showing through on this side which you don't really want because it'd be the opposite side that'd be back here and i don't want that stitching so i am going to hand sew it so now just you know releasing that i'm going to go and push this back cut off the ends i don't want to get rid of the bulk cut off the ends i don't want to get rid of the bulk and then we're going to do a bit of hand stitching now you want to think yourself lucky hand stitching well for me is extremely rare it's a bit like let me think a dead donkey hen's teeth a unicorn <laughs> very very rarely seen but uh, I'm going to do two methods. I'm going to show you slip stitching and I'm going to show you ladder stitch. And then you can make your mind up which you think looks the neatest on your project. All right. As I said to you, let's get rid of... As you can see, i got a bit behind the bit in front. Any excess, both ends okay yep so we're all nice and neat and now uh yeah i think it'd help us if i again <laughs> blame me sideways if i again bring let me show you see this on the camera yeah bring that flap forward yeah and just do that quarter inch line again and the same with the other end now we're all nice and neat is squish this down yeah and bring that flap forward and do quarter an inch seam across there this is getting really thick now so you may want to if you're able lessen off your tension for your uh presser foot or use a walking foot because this is this is getting you know bulky very bulky now or another thing you can do if you can't lessen the tension on your foot is to very you know where the lever is for your foot is to very slightly lift the foot as it's sewing that's another thing you can do so i've just done that as you can see i've just done quarter of an inch across there uh, so that this is now sticking up like this and the same the other end so it's now sticking up like this and this is where now we're going to sew it uh, so I'm going to go and get my chair get myself comfortable bubbles so that I can show you and Sam has asked me shall we splitting zips and hand sewing she's laughing at me so um yeah i'm going to show you a few needle threaders for those of us that are a little bit you know uh finding it difficult these days to hand sew so i'll get that out as well righty ho a hand sewing bit <coughs> okay here's my bag of goodies now uh first off I've had some chatting to me and saying, well, you know, at the end of the day, uh, 
when it comes to answering, ooh, I can really do it. I like no, neither do I, you know, as I said to you before. Very rare I do it. And I'm now looking, oh, here he is, for different uh, ways of threading the needle. Do you know what I haven't got? Oh, yeah, I got some white. Let's lose that. The white will do. Right. Okay, uh, I should use pink, but you can see it better if I use white. So, uh, threading the needle. I got some sort of scissors in here. Do you remember when I made these ages ago? Huh? And we gave them away um, as a prize. I, I don't know, I think I made four or five in the end and gave them away as prizes. But anyway, I keep all my hands sewing bits and bobs in here. And so, first off, we need a length of cotton. That'll do. Secondly, I'm going to get my thread magic. Now, you don't have to do any of this. Of course you don't. But this is me, and this is what I do. So I'm just going to lay my cotton in my thread magic. Yep, hold on to it. Oh, hold on to it, get the other end and just pull the cotton through, yeah? And that's giving it a coating, uh, which stops it twisting and knotting and generally misbehaving, okay? Uh, next thing, uh, you're going to want some sort of uh, symbol because otherwise it's going to play havoc. And then, now... <laughs> To thread the needle. This is a bit Sam was saying to me, well, what's best then? Because whoop, <laughs> she doesn't do much hand sewing either. You know, it's to do with our hands and, and, and to do with our eyesight and what have you. Now, I got this one from Clover that's got, I hope you can see this on the camera, it's got quite a sick bar, thin but sick bar. Uh, I looked everywhere because I saw one the other day. And I looked everywhere, you know, you can get them. And this end is like a little bit of tin foil, a little bit of a uh, little bit of thin metal. And then the bit that sticks out like this is just a bit of wire. Well, they're fine, but I I certainly find it difficult to get the wire into the needle, let alone, any, let alone the bloody cotton. So with this thick one, it's, it's much easier. Uh, then I got another little gadget here that I do use quite often. When it works, it's brilliant. Sometimes... It doesn't work for me and uh written on it in very small writing somewhere oh yeah hang on where's the light small that end large this end okay right so let's get a needle i do tend to use these john james uh needles you can buy them like this yeah or in a little uh thing like this but with the John James needles, what that means to me is that they've got uh, bigger eyes on them. Yeah, the eyes are larger than generally speaking. Oops. So let's put it, let's say it's a small needle. So I, if I was using this one, <laughs> I don't expect it to work for me now. It never does on camera, does it? I put the needle in so the eye is facing left to right yeah and then I take my bit of cotton lay it over the top and kind of hold it and then pull down and as you can see I, I, can you see this under there when I pulled that cot when I pulled that lever down it poked the cotton through now I get hold of the cotton yeah <laughs> and pull it yeah but here's the thing did I get it in the needle yes I did right so that's one way of, of threading the needle Sam okay and so these who is it made by large gross Grand, large, 
small petite pokero. All right, so pokero. So that's well. What's that then? That's uh, English, French, and Spanish. <laughs> there's nothing on it that says who makes it, but there it is. Okay. So there's that, and that will thread your needle for you. So now I gotta take it back out. Okay. Of course, I would say to you that the thread magic makes a difference, Sam. Right, uh, there's my needle again. So now this time, I'm going to pick up the needle and using <coughs> my clover elongated uh, thing, yeah, I poke that through, which is quite easy to do because uh, it's nice and uh, stiff. And then I can just thread under normal circumstances. Pop the cotton through that bit and pull it through the needle. So now my needle's threaded again. So I would say to you, uh, out of preference, I think that this one is the best. But you do need to have uh, large eyes on your needle. This one is better if you've got an average needle that's got small eyes on it, okay? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying for us girlies. Now, ooh, saying of which, before I go any further, let me get another bag over. I was looking in this bag. Can you see this? Yeah, this bag. Now, this is another bag I made ages ago with a uh, PVC uh, front on it. So I can see what's it. So when I open my drawer looking for different things, Instead of having to open every pouch with this see-through pouch, I can see what's in it. And in here, I keep all kinds of speciality needles, like, uh, let me just see, Schmetz Gold, uh, Top Stitch, what have I got? Stretch, Blue Eyed, I don't use them anymore. Uh, Smets Universal, I got a pack of Smets Universal. I got a pack of hundred of those that I keep over there by my machine. Uh, but there's other things I spent. I got a leather one. I got all sorts. What have I got in here? Oh, organ needles. Yeah. So, I mean, in here, I do keep. What's that one? Sharps. Yeah. So, I any, any speciality needles. I keep in it and I thought that little um needle holder. Oh, and while we're at it, what I did find in here as well <laughs> was a better bit of elastic. A better bit of elastic that I could have done this with. But never mind. Done now. Use that for the next one. So let's get rid of that. But there's an idea. If you want uh, uh, me to show you how to make Oh, little shoes on that. It's pretty, isn't it? Little pairs of shoes. Uh, if you want me to show you how to make a see-through pouch so that uh, if you've got these in your drawer, you can see exactly what's in them without having to open them. That's something we can do. But anyway, let's move it on. Moving on, moving on. So I have now got my needle uh, threaded. And I'm just bringing... Right, it back up, so it, the length of it is to about there at the moment, so I've got that bit straight free. So hand stitching. Now, taking our project, oh, I'm getting rid of any loose bits. What I want to do is this bit now, I want to stitch down, not to the bit where the lipstick is but stitch down can you see stitch down to the side of that uh, where we stitched the lipstick pocket on in the first place this this bit here yeah so I'm going to show you a couple of ways of doing it okay I mean initially yep we need to tie on 
This is why you need. Ow. On that one. This one. No, that's too loose now. My fingers are cold, so that one's alright, but my fingers are hot. You need to. Bring your um, cotton in. And as I was saying, if I was doing it. Uh, oh, I've gone through again. If I was doing it just for myself, I'd use pink now to make it a bit more. In, uh, to make it a bit more uh, invisible. Right, so, uh, back through. So I've done one running stitch on the top, and I go the other side, and I go for, always from the top down, from the top, and back up. So I'm back on the top. Okay. Then from the top again, down, and out. And then to the back to the, the original top top down and back out. Okay. And then from on this one on the top down. Okay, so now having sewn up both sides of these end pieces. Okay, which has made stoppers for our zip and also our little internal pockets as well. We can now, having cut off any um, errant threads, turn this the correct way out. And. Poking out our corners. You can hear my telly in the background. I'm watching uh, a rerun of Merlin. <laughs> so, poking out the corners. And uh, obviously, I will give it a quick uh, steam press as well and i've just seen a problem there righty ho all right now this is a problem first of all let's show you it done finished yeah it wants a press but there we go all done up And as I say, it wants pressing so that it stands up nice and straight. But there's the little bag. Uh, but, and I said to you there's a problem. The problem is, when I sewed across this base, I didn't quite catch all the fabric. So how will I remedy that? Right. I need to undo it. <laughs> I need to come back on myself. Turn it the other way back out again. Alright. And it was this end, wasn't it? This was the end where I did not catch all the stitching. And the original stitch, if I look at the base, was the one beneath, would have been the original stitch. So now it's quite simple to remedy. I need to do 
put it back in the machine and stitch further further backwards i need to come backwards so that i make sure that i do catch all of that again all right so that's not not a problem it's not gonna make any difference i'm gonna put it back under the machine so the finished article i just popped a lipstick into one of the little pockets that we made so that you can see that it fits and i've just taken a few photographs of it from always round so that you can see the finished project and i think you look at i mean obviously now i've got a lot of things stuffed in there and i think you'll agree with me that it's small enough to go in your handbag but also useful enough to keep on your dressing table with your favorite brand of makeup in you know and as i will do make another because i use two brands one is called doll 10 and the other is called tart 